Hey everybody, welcome to another Avid Max Tying Tuesdays. My name is Brady, and today we're gonna to show you how to tie the Nitro Caddis Pupa. The hook we're using today is a Firehole 315, great straight eye hook. Then we're gonna follow it up with a brass bead on this one, the Slycops bead eye in black. The thread we're using is a UTC 70 denier in dark brown. I am also using a little bit of wood duck for some antenna. Have some Wapsie Beaver in natural, beaver dubbing in natural for our thorax and collar. And then the legs we're gonna use are some India Henback in the natural color. And the main body of our fly today is a little bit of pearl core braid. Also gonna throw in some medallion sheetings as the wing pads. All right, so we have our hook set in our vise and I went ahead and slid that bead on there. All we're gonna do next is start our thread right behind that as we typically do. Not gonna work too far back though because we're gonna work mainly on the front end of this fly, leaving most of the hook bare. So once we have that tied in, we can bring in our body material here. So we have our pearl core braid in tan. We're gonna tie that in first. So I've cut just a small section of it here. And before we tie it in, we're gonna actually burn one of the ends and make it extra buggy. So I'm gonna hold it out and just use my lighter to come in real nice and slow and just start to melt that out slightly. And as you're going, you can kind of melt it down and then shape it just slightly with your fingers, but be very careful. As you see, I got a little bit stuck to me. If you get some of this stuck to you, you can burn yourself. You see there, I've burned myself with paracord in the past, melting paracord. You can do the same thing with this. If you drip it on yourself, it'll burn you real good. So be careful as you're doing this. But we just want to kind of melt the back end and create, like I said, just kind of a buggy looking um, body material to this fly, kind of bringing it to a little point there. So that'll work for me. And then I'm going to come in and measure it out and decide how long I want that to be. So I'm going to do it just about as long as that hook shank, just uh, to where it slightly starts to go down the barb. It's maybe three beads in length there total. If you use that as your, your measuring mark there. And we'll just secure that down nice and snug and we can clip out our excess material here. Just like so. And go ahead and wrap over that and clean it up, creating a nice little thread thorax working area here. So we're gonna decide how big we want our thorax to be. I like it to be right about the same uh, width as our bead there. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna add a tiny little bit of dubbing. And this will just be a small prop for our wing pads and our legs, and materials that'll be tied in here. In a second, so just with a little bit of that beaver dubbing, super small noodle here. Just to do one quick dub collar wrap right behind where that body ends. So just like so. And then we can come in and do our medallion sheeting. So for this medallion sheeting, I always like to cut a strip that's about the diameter, or sorry, the width of the bead. You can see that there. And then I also come through on the tips and I like to just kind of trim out the corners a little bit and attempt to round out the end so we don't have a square and on this sheeting. So just slightly rounded there, as you can see, and then we're gonna tie that in on both sides. So we'll start on this side, and I'm gonna do about a third way up where that body material is going. And secure that down, and clip out our excess, and do the same on the other side. Just match them up, same length, 
capture that down and then as you wrap back towards where that dubbing is they'll flare out for you just slightly from there we're going to add our antenna material so this is a little bit of wood duck a beautiful wood duck feather i like to for the tan pattern i like to try and find some that's got a little bit of that that brownish color the golden color there and we're just going to pick out a couple of these so separate out two feathers and we'll clip those out and then we can kind of figure out where we want those to be so i'm going to do one at a time just because it's easier for me to get them to point out the directions i want them to so we'll take our first one here and i want it to kind of be beveled over the top so that it points downward when it's secured in. So secure that on one side just above where I tied in that medallion sheeting. And then I will add the other one in here. And we're gonna go longer than the body there. You can see I'm sticking out just past it. And do the same thing on the other side. Like so, and if you tie them in kind of loosely, you can still move them around before you secure them in. Make sure they're the same length and they're kind of going the way you want them to. And then we'll secure that into place by working back on top of it all. And now we can come in with our henback. So pluck the henback feather already. And I'm just gonna trim out, similar to you would if you were using like a partridge feather, trim out the tip section so you have a nice working V to tie in, just like so. This natural color matches up nicely with the tan variation of this. And now we're just gonna Put that in place. I like them to go just about halfway down to where our extended body is there. So we'll try and pinch those on either side and get them loosely wrapped in. See if I like kind of how they're sticking out there. Maybe give them a slight adjustment before securing them down. You pack a good bit of materials all into a small little working area on this fly, but I think it's an awesome little look you get out of it when it's all said and done. Not too difficult after you've tied a few, but it does, can take a little getting used to. So now we're just gonna clean that up a little bit here. And we can go ahead and add our thorax dubbing, so some more of that beaver dubbing. a nice little collar here. For the collar I like to try and get some of those picky fibers as well from this awesome Wapsi beaver dubbing. If you haven't been on the site recently, depending on when you've watched this video, uh, we just added a whole load of Wapsi products. So a whole lot of naturals, uh, UTC threading, and a variety of other stuff. So give that a look if you're interested in the awesome Wapsi products. Find a good bit of dubbing here to use. A little bit of wax to help me out. Get a nice noodle going. But for ease of tying, I definitely like the dubbing noodle. that covered nicely so we're going to whip finish this off and clip out our thread and then I'm going to come through with a little dubbing brush and just kind of hit that dubbing and get it to 
be nice and picky. Try to avoid breaking my antenna off there though. fibers to stick out and get some bugginess as if this cat is trying to break free the tan nitro caddis pupa if you enjoyed the video today make sure to give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see us tie in the future, please drop us a comment in the lines below. For more fly fishing and outdoor related videos, be sure to subscribe to the Avid Max YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you out there.